Next, write down. Done, all of you guys. Let me know if you are done. I'll just go to the other slide, another page. Okay. So now, like I said, in case of association or dissociation. Uh, the colligative property changes because eventually what is happening in both the cases the number of particles in the solution the number of particles in the solution increases or decreases changes basically okay so now you see in case of association how we will calculate the value of vent of factor i okay so first one you write down First, we'll see what is the formula of I, okay, and then we'll discuss this association and dissociation. You see, Venthoff factor, Venthoff factor, which is I, represented by I. This you can actually compare with uh, with the compressibility factor in states of matter. Okay, more value of Z, more will be the deviation from ideal gas behavior. Okay, that's what we did. Compressibility factor Z. Similarly, here we have I. More value of I, more will be the deviation from the colligative property, the expected colligative property. Okay. So this is one thing. Okay. Now you see the formula of I we have, the Venthoff factor I, it is given as I is equals to Venthoff factor because this formula based question also they ask sometimes. So the deviation from, so I is equals to the actual number of particles, write down this actual number of, number of particles. after dissociation or association or association this divided by this divided by the number of particles initially dissolve the number of particles initially dissolve right we can also say because it is the uh, expected actual number of particles after dissociation and association this also we also uh, call it as the normal colligative property divided by abnormal okay so like you see the another term also will write down which is I is equals to the actual, right? Actual, or we also write it as observed. Actual or ob observed colligative property, CP is the colligative property, divided by, divided by the theoretical colligative property. Theoretical colligative property actual by theoretical okay in terms of molar, molar mass also we write it as okay in terms of molar mass what we write the normal molecular mass normal molecular mass of solute divided by abnormal molecular mass mass of solute okay so this is the formula of i correct how do we calculate this in terms of dissociation or association that will see okay so first condition you write down when association takes place in case of association in 
इन केस ऑफ एसोसिएशन ओके सो राइट डाउन इन दिस इन दिस द नंबर ऑफ सॉल्यूट पार्टिकल इन दिस in this the number of solute particles is less than the expected value association the number of solute particles decreases okay so number of solute particles is less than the expected value okay like for example you see benzoic acid example of association is was in the benzoic acid will have dimerization tendency okay so benzoic acid have the tendency to get dimerized and hence the number of particles decreases correct similarly in this you see like association how do we find out i here right so you see one general example i'll write down here suppose we have this uh, i'll go to the next uh, page right see suppose i am assuming uh like a um, um no the polymerization process here n number of molecules a and this clubs together forms an this is the association case okay so what happens here suppose at t is equals to 0 at t is equals to 0 we have this has a concentration and this is 0 so when it uh, forms this so this will dissociate and gives a minus a alpha and then we get here a alpha by n how many of you understood this tell me first all of you understood this a minus a alpha n gives 1 so 1 gives 1 by n a alpha gives a alpha by n right this you see here this is the this plus this is the total number of particles initially right at t is equals to 0 and this plus this is the number of particles at time t when the association takes place correct so the number of particles after dissociation divided by total number of particles initially present so with that uh, formula i is equals to what we can write the total number of particles after dissociation which is a minus a alpha plus a alpha divided by n and this whole divided by the initial number of particles which is a okay so when you solve this i is equals to you will get i is equals to you see this a gets cancel here this 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 and this 
and we'll get i is equals to 1 plus 1 by n minus 1 into alpha. This is what we get. Formula is this. 1 plus 1 by n minus 1 into alpha. Okay. So now when you also write down in this way, i is equals to i is equals to 1 minus 1 by 1 minus 1 by n into alpha. This also we can write minus I'll take common outside. Right? n is obviously it is more than 1. Right? And this n is what? n is obviously it is more than 1. So 1 by n is less than 1. Right? Means this term is positive. Right? This means what? The value of i in case of association is less than 1. This is one important condition we have. The value of n tau factor in case of association is less than 1. Okay, so in those formula you can write the number of uh, actually the the actual colligative property divided by the theoretical colligative property is less than one. So with this data, what we can write the actual colligative property because this question you will get in the book actual colligative property is less than the theoretical colligative property. Okay, this you must remember in case of association the actual colligative property is less than the theoretical colligative property. Okay, this is one thing. So this is the formula we use to find out I. Okay. Correct. Similarly, in case of dissociation, what happens, you see? And then we see the formula of this uh, uh, various colligative property. In case of dissociation, what happens? It is exactly opposite. Right? So in this, we write down, in this, the number of particles is more than, in this, the number of particles is more than the expected value number of particles is more than the expected value correct so similarly if you try to find out the formula of i here in case of dissociation one example i'll write down here suppose the reaction is ax by and this dissociates x a y plus plus y b x minus. This is what we get. Now suppose what you need to find out here at time t is equals to 0. I am considering this the concentration is a. This is 0 and this is 0. Right. You need to find out the expression for i. Try to do this first. Similarly, you have to do like we have done this one for association. Similarly, you have to do for dissociation. Okay, so you try this once and then we'll discuss. Hello. Yeah, Ruchir, I'm taking class right now. Can I talk to you tomorrow because I have class till 10 o'clock.
एनीथिंग एनीथिंग इम्पोर्टेंट टेल मी अच्छा विल टॉक टू यू टुमारो ओके इन क्लास राइट See what we'll do here. We need to find out i. So we need to. We have to find out the number of particles initially present and after dissociation. That is what we need to find out. The number of particles before uh, dissociation. Correct. So reaction I have given you. Concentration I have given you. Try to write down the concentration of A and B after dissociation. and then you have to add those and take the ratio initial and final done anyone anyone has got i expression see what we have to do here uh a dissociates correct so what we can write we write here at time t is equals to t we'll get a minus a alpha and one gives x so we'll get here x a alpha and then y a alpha that is what we get because one gives x So a alpha gives x a alpha. One gives y. So a alpha gives y a alpha. Correct. Now i is equals to what? i is equals to what you see total number of particles after dissociation which is a minus a alpha plus x a alpha plus y a alpha divided by the number of particles initially present a again you see this a will get cancel here and i is equals to we get here One plus one plus x plus y minus one into alpha. This is what the formula of I will get here. X plus y is the total number of particles. Now suppose if x plus y is equals to n, I am assuming, then I formula is one plus n minus one into alpha. and this n value is always greater than 1 hence i for dissociation also greater than 1 so its actual colligative property is greater than the theoretical colligative properties got it x plus y into 1 minus alpha you won't get you you try to Priti, you try to write down the expression. You will get it. Priti got it. Okay. Again, you see one thing here. For a strong electrolyte, what is the alpha value for a strong electrolyte? If we have a strong electrolyte. What is the alpha value? Tell me, guys, the alpha value of strong electrolyte. Anyone, the value of 
alpha for a strong electrolyte yes one right so strong electrolyte alpha value is one correct this you should know first of all suppose example I am taking Na2SO4 right so this Na2SO4 dissociates like 2Na plus plus SO4 2 minus this is how it dissociates so x plus y value is what 2 and 1 x is 2 y is 1 right so x plus y value is 3 here because this is x this is y Right, so I value is what? Because dissociation takes place. So 1 plus x plus y minus 1 into alpha. So if alpha is 1 if you substitute here, so I value is nothing but x plus y, which is nothing but 3. So what you need to keep in mind that in case of strong electrolyte, I is nothing but x plus y. I is nothing but x plus y. Got it? Okay. For weak electrolyte, the information will be given. Right? For weak electrolyte, the information will be given so that you can find out. Okay? That you don't have to worry. Okay? NaCl, if it is there, can you tell me the I value for NaCl? NaCl is also a strong electrolyte. The I value of NaCl is what? Got it? Yeah, I value is 2. I value is 2 here because NaCl dissociates like Na plus and Cl minus. So this you should know actually for a strong electrolyte. Alpha value is 1. Okay. Now you see, coming back to the, the all thing that we have here. That what is the formula of colligative property or abnormal colligative property? Okay, so for all these things, you see, you need to write the formula as the first colligative property. I'm sorry, the first colligative property is the RLVP, relative loading in vapor pressure. And for this, the formula is what delta P delta P by P naught A is equals to XB is the formula, right? XB is the formula. But when you have abnormal colligative property, it means when you have electrolyte present as a solute or electrolytic solute if it is present, then instead of writing down this, you should write down here I into XB, point of factor I. This is the formula of RLVP. Okay. Delta TB, elevation in boiling point, that will be I into KB into M. I just we have to introduce. Delta TF, delta TF is equals to I KF into m okay and the osmotic pressure pi is equals to i c r t this is what the formula we have when the solute is electrolyte only just you need to put i term over there understood Got it, all of you? Now write down some questions. So what I will suggest you here, all of you guys, you try to memorize this formula only. What I will suggest, you don't memorize pi is equals to CRT. You write this formula, you know, always you write pi is equals to ICRT. Okay, if the solute is electrolyte, then we'll calculate I according to the formula we have dissociation association. If it is non-electrolyte, then I value is 1. Okay, for non-electrolyte. 
if the solute is non electrolyte the i value is 1 and that you substitute 1 you'll get the previous formula okay so what i'll suggest in general what happens that in hurry we forget to write down this i term in this formula so the best way is to memorize this formula only depending upon the solute whether it is electrolyte or non electrolyte find out the value of i and substitute like i said non electrolyte i value is 1 substitute 1 if it is electrolyte then on depending upon association or dissociation find out i and substitute 